Hi, I'm Dr. Jim Masterson. I'm a faculty member and assistant professor at FAU Harbor Branch, uh, and I manage the daily operations at our Exploration Command Center. So you are here in our uh, ECC lobby. This is where we would uh, have larger public audiences or student audiences come in to follow along with telepresence-enabled ocean exploration. The ECC is a collaborative effort uh, between Harbor Branch and our NOAA Cooperative Institute for Ocean Exploration Research and Technology. Uh, the Sea Art vision is to transform the way we explore the ocean and transition our results to breakthrough products and technology. Harbor Branch is the managing partner of the Cooperative Institute. UNCW is a co-managing partner, and it is a consortium of multiple uh, institutes. Uh, the goals uh, of the Cooperative Institute are the exploration of continental shelf edge frontiers, studying vulnerable coral ecosystems, both deep and shallow water systems, and developing advanced undersea technologies. Over the course of the past 11 years, dozens of investigators have explored nearly 900 sites, have collected uh, almost 1,700 samples and 100,000 images, and published hundreds of uh, papers based on the uh, collaborative efforts of the Cooperative Institute. Let's go into our main uh, uh, Exploration Command Center area. This is where our land-based scientists would follow along in real time with uh, NOAA ROV operations occurring using the NOAA Oceanus Explorer. So we don't have a live mission going on uh, right now, so this is just recorded footage, but this is what you would see during a dive. On the center screen, you would see uh, the main camera from the Deep Discoverer ROV. That is a 6,000 meter capable uh, ROV. If I turn the volume up here, you can hear scientists on the ship talking with one another, trying to identify what they're looking at, interacting with scientists that are at shore-based facilities like the ECC. On the screen to the left, that's a camera two view looking down on the ROV from a companion ROV, the Serio SLED remotely operated vehicle. And then over on the third screen, you can call up a variety of information. It's the ship that decides what goes up there. If it's a mapping leg, then you might see bathymetry information. If the ROVs are in the water, then you'll see a quad view that shows the ship bearing and heading and the depths of the bottom and the ROVs. Maybe we've got a live look into the shipboard control room. Maybe we've got a multiple camera view of what's happening above and below the sea surface. So a quick overview of this concept of telepresence. The ship that we're following along with is NOAA's Oceanus Explorer. This vessel has been dubbed America's Ship for Ocean Exploration. The ROVs aboard Oceanus are the NOAA Deep Discoverer and the companion ROV Sled Sirius. Telepresence is basically the ship heading out, putting the ROVs in the water, going as much as six kilometers deep, retrieving this high quality imagery that is sent via satellite up and then back down to the Inner Space Center in Rhode Island. And then that signal goes out to all of the users around the country and around the world. This happens in just a few seconds time. We might be watching a video that is being captured live off of Hawaii, and that imagery reaches us at the Harbor Branch ECC just a few seconds later. So it does allow true real-time follow-along by our shore-based scientists. It allows us to connect directly with the science leads that are in the shipboard control room, and the scientists in our ECC and elsewhere can be active participants in the mission. We're going to go back and we're going to look at the last expedition that occurred at the end of 2019. This was the Southeastern U.S. Deep Sea Exploration, and it took place from October 31st to November 20th of last year. And it was an exploration to collect baseline information about unknown and poorly understood deep water areas of the U.S. Southeast, basically from Florida up through Georgia and into South Carolina. We had the honor of having one of Harbor Branch's coral biologists on the ship as a science team lead, and we had multiple live interactions with the ship during this expedition, both for public audiences and for students. 
Prior to the commencement of the ROV leg of a mission, there's a mapping leg, and the ship will go up and down and back and forth, and what they're doing is they're collecting multi-beam sonar information that gives the scientists a nice map. We have now a good bathymetry map where we can see the contours of the seafloor, and we can target the dive sites that are likely to be of interest. From there, it's time to put the ROVs in the water. The mapping portion of the expedition revealed two large mounds. ROV dives confirmed these were large living deepwater coral reefs comprised of the coral species Lophelia. Lophelia typically occurs from 200 to 1,000 meters deep, well beyond the reach of sunlight. Because they don't contain the photosynthetic algal symbionts that give shallow tropical corals their color, they appear white even though they are alive and healthy. Lophelia grows extremely slowly, one centimeter a year or less. A large Lophelia mound may be hundreds of years old. They're especially vulnerable to damage from commercial bottom trawl fishing. Scientists aboard Okeanos never know what they'll encounter during their ROV dives. This is a one and a half to two meter ocean sunfish. This is the most massive living bony fish, reaching a thousand kilograms. It exhibits extreme modification of the typical fish body plan, having the fewest vertebra of any fish. Females can lay as many as 300 million eggs in a single spawning event. Here is a blind lobster making a failed attempt at catching a squid dinner. This is a species of goosefish, a relative of the anglerfishes. It's an ambush predator that sits and waits for prey to get a little too close to its large mouth. Then it strikes with a very rapid motion. A question I'm often asked is why is ocean exploration important? My response is to explain that the vast majority of the world ocean remains unmapped, unobserved, and unexplored. Just under 20% of the global seafloor has been mapped using modern technologies like multi-beam sonar. Even within the U.S. exclusive economic zone, a little less than half of the coastal and ocean seafloor has been mapped. Harbor Branch efforts to conserve, protect, and pursue wise use of the ocean and its resources begin with the first step of exploring and studying to better understand it. I hope you enjoyed this behind-the-scenes look at our Exploration Command Center. If you'd like to learn more about FAU Harbor Branch's research and outreach programs, please visit our website. There you can also access our virtual resources and find out how to reserve a spot on one of our ocean exploration tours.